Hey my babes, welcome back to my channel. I know I don't need to put on a trigger warning because I'm guessing you already, you clicked on this video, you've seen the title, you know what it's gonna be about, but just a little disclaimer, obviously the things I'm talking about in this video are quite serious and can be quite emotionally charged for some people. So just be aware of that and sending love to any of you who are affected by the topic I'm discussing in this video. I don't know why I'm avoiding saying it. I feel like it's become such a dirty word in our society. But yeah, today I'm gonna to be talking about abortions and my personal abortion story. That's insane to even say out loud because to be honest, I didn't think it was something I would ever discuss on social media. It's such a taboo topic, which is sad. And I don't know what made me change my mind. I think I have a voice for a reason. I obviously like helping people and I think if my story helps even one person, then you know what, all the pain was bloody worth it, okay? And part of me is like, maybe it's for a little bit of selfish reasons because I would like to share my story too to feel validated that I'm not the only person in the world feeling like this. So it can be like a little support group or just raising awareness for what an abortion is actually like got my comfies on and I've got my cup of Earl Grey ready. I've also had to clip back my fringe because the bangs, they be banging today. They're literally like this, like a little ferret on my face. So we're probably gonna clip them back for the foreseeable, but yeah, let's just get into it. First off, I don't know why we think of abortions as such a taboo or like weird topic to talk about when I got this little leaf leaflet through when I went through mine and apparently one in three women in the UK will experience an abortion once in her lifetime like that statistic is absolute madness like think of how many women are just sat on the tube so every time you're on the tube like I don't ugh, what like eight ten of those women are gonna I have either had an abortion or are gonna have one like it's crazy so I think it's time we discuss it a little bit more and I also just want to say we are so lucky in the UK like I really understand that and I'm very grateful we have free healthcare and we do we have the right to choose to be honest it's absolute madness that the world is going backwards and in some states in America it's illegal to have an abortion like and is it where is it Northern Ireland or somewhere in Ireland I, I don't know but yeah we are very lucky and I really do believe it is a woman's choice and it's your fucking body like I, I don't get why it's even up for discussion especially by like older white men who will never have to experience the feeling of doing it or the feeling of being scared to raise a child when you don't think you have the means like sorry what and I'll be completely honest like brutally honest before I had one I I genuinely used to view it as such a throwaway thing. I used to be like, haha, yeah, if I get pregnant, I'll just get an abortion. Like, I'll just get rid of it. It's just a pill. It's really easy. Like, my thoughts on what it was like are very different to what it was actually like. And I do think people should be a little bit more scared. I don't know if that's the right word, but we should be more cautious with our sexual health because to be honest, if you're big and bad enough to have sex, you're big and bad enough to have a child because that's what it is. As pleasurable and fun as sex is, and it's great that we do have all this contraception, but if you're having sex, like, there is a likely chance you could make a baby. So I think we need to realize, like, the gravity of the situation. And I'm not just saying that, like, little teacher at you. I'm saying it at myself, too, because it definitely woke me up. Like, I don't think I understood the psychological and emotional effects it would have on me. And I heard people say it, but I was just kind of like, whatever, I'll get over it. It's not that deep, but it really fucking is. And also, just another disclaimer, this story is my own personal, unique experience. And maybe there'll be someone who relates to it, but not every woman who has an abortion will have done it for the same reasons of me, will experience the things that I did will feel the way that I did and it's it's a very unique thing so I don't want someone to watch this and be like feel bad that they didn't feel the same things as me or feel scared if they're about to have one because everyone is so different I've spoke to so many women that have had abortions and I can't believe how different it was for all of us which is actually crazy and also there's so many factors as to why someone would get an abortion like this is I'll be telling you the reason why I got mine but again I've heard so many stories of why people haven't like People, sometimes it's people with kids who can't or don't want another kid or don't think they're financially ready or like there is so many reasons why so there isn't just one or wrong right reason but any reason that you choose is your right reason and don't let anyone make you feel bad I know it's hard because religion plays into it but I think in this modern day and age like 
I'm sorry, I'm very grateful that we are allowed to have abortions. First up, I'm not gonna be giving you timelines or anything. I wanna protect the identity of the guy too. I don't want anyone to know who it was with. I don't want anyone to like speculate or know who it was with. It's not, he hasn't decided to put this up here, I have. So nothing like that will be mentioned. I'm gonna tell you how it was for me, but I'm sure it's very different for the guy. Like we both have different perspectives on it. But first up is how I realized. So, you know what, I, it was really crazy because I didn't think you could get pregnancy symptoms that quick. I just assumed it would be in the first trimester, like the first three months when you're like throwing up or whatever. But when I tell you, I was so tired to the point that I genuinely thought something was wrong with me. Like I, I had never felt exhaustion like that in my life. Like I was just like, what the fuck is wrong? Like I'd walk to the corner shop and genuinely, I'd walk up a hill and be out of breath. By the time I got home from the corner shop, I'd have to sleep for like three hours. I, it was actually like, I don't know how people handle it. Like I was only pregnant for what, probably three, four weeks max. And like, I don't know how the fuck pregnant women do it. Like, I, it, it was it was like you couldn't, you can't even open your eyes. So that was my first symptom. Then my boobs, fucking hell they were huge like a cup size bigger and they were like hard and firm but to be fair i can't lie i know i shouldn't say this but they looked absolutely banging like i just looked good in general okay you know how they say pregnant women glow and i know you probably think i'm chatting shit because i was only pregnant for like what a month when i tell you my skin was fucking popping my hair was like flowing like i just looked amazing but i felt like shit and another thing which i should have should have been like a little should have been a telltale sign smells it was like you have a hum superhuman smell and i know all these things you hear people talking about talk about it but until you experience it it's like actually wild like i'll be sat behind someone on the bus and like three there's a woman three seats in front of me and her perfume was like the most tox intoxicating thing i've ever smelled oh she like Ugh. like everything made me feel sick i'd open the dishwasher and i'd be like i want to throw up i'd open the fridge and like nothing would be off i kept checking all the food is something off like what the fuck is going on and like i just couldn't even be in the kitchen because it stunk but like our kitchen i was asking everyone else i was asking my housemates like does the kitchen stink they were like no i was like what the actual fuck like everything smelled like crazy no backstory i was seeing this guy and the universe loves to play tricks on me okay so i basically didn't want to be with this guy anymore so i sort of broken up with him and said like it was quite amicable, it was nice. I was just like, I don't think we should see each other anymore. I don't think this is right. When I tell you, the next fucking day, I found out I was pregnant, like, I'm sorry, is that a joke? And obviously, me and my stupid Pisces ass believing in science, I was like, that means like, we're meant to be together, like, I'm meant to be with him. I don't really attract my periods, but this was like a really busy time in my life. And I suddenly, something made me think of periods. I can't remember what it was. Maybe my friend said about her period or I think I was saying to the guy something like, oh, do you remember when we did this? And I was like, it kind of clocks on my brain. I was like, oh shit, that was when I was on my period. And I was like, when the fuck did I last to have a period? So I remember saying to him, right? So this is the day after we broke up. We're still kind of talking. And that's why I had this realization. I was like, oh, when we did this, I was on my period. And I was like, fuck, I haven't had my period for six weeks. And he was like, shit, really? And I was like laughing. I was like, ha, huh, yeah, I really haven't. Like, that's not great. And he was like, go to the pharmacy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, like I'll go, I'll go to the pharmacy. Um, there was one, there was one just down the street from where I lived. I was like, cool, 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 I'll get a pregnancy test. Like, wasn't scared. I actually thought the whole thing was quite funny. I remember texting my friends, I text my house, I text everyone. I thought it was fucking hilarious. I was like, guys, I'm doing a pregnancy test, lol. Like, as if it was something to joke about. I was like, I haven't had my period in a while. And everyone else was taking it seriously. I think my mind plays tricks on me and I use humor to process like scary situations. And they were like, oh my God, ring us when you find out. And I was just like, yeah, all right, it's obviously gonna be negative. I've done a pregnancy test before. So I just, you just always assume it's gonna be negative, right? So I walk in right early in the morning, like 9 a.m. just as it open, like two pregnancy tests, please. Like, you know, you always think they're judging you, but whatever. And I look younger than I am as well. So that made me feel even shitter. So then I go back up, go for a little wee. Again, not phased, just peeing on a stick. So I'm looking at it. I see these two red fucking lines, like two. And I was like, what does two mean? I was like, oh. 
when, you know like in films when they find out they're pregnant and it's like slow motion and like they can't believe it like it, if I disassociated from myself I was watching myself look at this pregnancy test like it wasn't even real to me like it was like something from a film and I was like this is not fucking happening to me you are absolutely I was like you're joking you're joking I don't know what to do because it's 9am I was like I can't ring my mom right now she's gonna be at work it's gonna ruin her day it's gonna freak her out no one was in none of my housemates were in um and obviously I said this all in all the group chats and then I was like I don't even know if I want to fucking tell my business to all these people <laughs> so I'm like hold up hold up I'm gonna ring Danny because I know she'll be working from home she'll handle it poor Danny I feel like she only gets these calls from me when I'm having an emergency but she's just like my go-to person so I call Danny 9am she's just like hello and I know she can I know she can tell that something's wrong just by her voice and because I'm calling her out of the blue and I'm literally like <laughs> hello <laughs> and she's like you okay and I was like I'm pregnant and she was literally like oh fuck and she was so good she's so good in a crisis I don't know how she does it and she was like you're gonna be fine like you're gonna be okay and she managed to calm me down and she was like what are you gonna do and obviously straight away I was like I'm getting an abortion like obviously what the fuck like it, it was such a whirlwind of emotions in like five minutes that I was like no no, no I'm getting an abortion I'm getting an abortion and she's like okay well you just chill are you gonna tell your mom I was like yep yeah. And she was gonna look up like abortion clinics for me or like look up what I'm gonna do. And that really helped me in that moment because when I was panicking, like I didn't even know the process of how you get an abortion. Your rational mind knows that like, I'm gonna be able to do this, but it's, I can't explain. And I'm sorry if anyone's ever gone through it where you see that pregnancy test say, da da da, when you don't want it. It is the wildest experience. Like it's, it's like you grow up in that second because I just realized oh my god yeah I'm not a kid like I'm actually not a child and even I was having the thoughts like oh my god I'm I'm a teenage I'm, I'm, I've got a teenage pregnancy and I was like no no no, babe babe you're whatever age I'm not gonna say what age but obviously I'm in my 20s I was like no no, no you're old enough like you were old enough to be a mum my mum had me younger than the age I was when I found out and I'm like damn like shit like fuck like I'm fully capable of having this kid do you know what I mean then I'm like calm down a bit calm down a bit everyone's asking me and I'm like shit I'm gonna have to tell them I'm actually gonna have to tell them I'm pregnant so I tell my housemates so but basically we've got a band of people that all fucking know that I've got a baby growing inside of me had to tell my friends like and everyone was really sweet to me that day like people called me and was there for me and I felt really like loved and cared for so then I call the guy right bear in mind we've broken up he knows it's bad news so I wouldn't have called him I would have just texted him that was fucking, imagine breaking up with someone the day before and then having to tell them the next day, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant with your little frog. <laughs> and you know what? You know when you see in films when the guy's like, it's whatever you decide, I'll be there, like we can raise it together. Like, no, none of that. Not that I wanted him to do that because I didn't want to have a baby with this man. But it was very sort of like expected, like, oh, you're just gonna get an abortion, like whatever. And he told me that, he'd already gone through this with one of his other girlfriends and I was like that made me feel really uncomfortable because it made me feel like if you've gone through this before why did you let it happen again and mm, I obviously know that the responsibility is on me it's on both of us it should be on both the man and the woman but unfortunately it does fall way more on women to be you know in control of their sexual health their contraception and i'll be completely honest i spoke about the fact that like four years ago i came off the pill and it was the best thing i ever did because for my mental health i don't know it just something trips out in my brain when i'm on the pill i cry all the time i gain weight i don't feel like myself in fact when i'm on the pill i feel like i'm viewing life in black and white and i can hang on heart say i, I don't think i ever will go back on it i mean i never say never because there might be a reason i need to but for the foreseeable I don't want to go on it and to be honest this experience still hasn't made me want to go on it and it definitely woke me up because I was being safe but I'll say we were about 90% safe 95% safe I don't know take that from what you will I know I made a mistake and I pay, fucking paid for it okay and I know what happened right we would like start having sex like heat at the moment and I'll be like shit like wouldn't even get to like two minutes whatever and we'd be I'll be like come on we need to wear a condom right and we'd put a condom on so that's what I mean when I tell you, like, I don't want to be graphic, but he never finished without a condom, okay? And I'm like, that is fucking mad. So the pull-out method or whatever, it's not a thing. It is not a thing. You can still get pregnant from just doing it a little bit without a condom or just the beginning or whatever. I've proven that. So, yeah. 
don't do that kids and use condoms the whole way or get on the fucking pill love so yeah take me as your warning sign to be very fucking careful i will say it was a blessing in disguise because now i am very very strict with contraception like condoms like anytime i've had a sexual partner after that experience i've been like it's not even a question i'm like have a con like we're using condoms um do you know what since i've been like stronger with it no guy has ever been like weird about it and i think if a guy was weird about it that would be my first red flag i wouldn't even want to sleep with him anymore because i think guys need to take more responsibility too because like why are you having sex with a girl who's not on contraception without a condom like are you mad are you actually mad because i could easily have just kept that baby and been like oh you need to pay me child support like you have a child now for the rest of your life like i don't think a lot of us understand the gravity of having sex so don't have sex kids because you will go pregnant and die <laughs> it's actually not funny guys but this is what i mean i laugh through trauma uh, I, I need to get that checked out i should discuss it with a therapist so then the day goes on I finally tell my mum and I'm very appreciative that I have a mum I can tell these things to because I know a lot of people wouldn't be able to tell family and I think do whatever, whatever is right for you if you know there's family members that wouldn't take it well for your own peace of mind. It's okay if you don't tell them. I do think if you can tell at least one trusted person just to have that support that really really helps. Um, because I don't think I would have got through it without my family or my friends at that time. But my mum was really sweet about it. Um, you know she knows life happens and it was so weird because i was just so convinced like i'm gonna get rid of it and she was like the only person well everyone was really nice and i'm sure everyone would have supported me if i did say i was gonna keep the baby but she was the person that was like it is up to you like it is your decision and whatever you do we will be there and like hearing those words was really weird to me because I don't think at any time did I have the thought that I could have the option to not have an abortion because it just felt like it was the right and expected thing to do and she was like you know we will help you like you could raise this baby if you want to and it's weird because after I got off the phone with her I really I just allowed myself to have a day an evening a morning a day to sort of ponder could I do this and I think that was healing for me to like allow my brain to like think of the possibilities because I, it's not something you want to do like hastily or you could regret it okay and it was very weird because I'm not a maternal person I never ever was I even said anyone who knows me before will know I said I never wanted to have kids or I didn't know if I wanted to and I never saw myself with kids I couldn't imagine a life with me being a mom really and it scared me a little bit because I was like damn like am I meant to want kids like it really freaked me out like that I didn't want them so badly but then this experience I don't know if it was the hormones which we will get onto that or the idea that this it could be a possibility for me like I never knew if I could have kids until this experience um I mean I don't know if I still will be able to after this like maybe that was my one chance and that's fucking scary too but I really was like shit like that's my baby and i just had this really weird like emotional thing where i was like that's my little baby and like i want to raise it like <laughs> i actually like it kind of makes me emotional like i can't actually talk about it a lot because it does make like it makes my eyes tear up because i'm like i just had this weird day like oh my god i was thinking of all the things i was going to do because i wasn't going to be with the dad i knew that but i was like okay like i can work hard i can get a job i can use my savings like I can go back and live near my mom. I can get a house. Like, I can provide for this child. Like, I'm old enough. And everywhere I went, which didn't help, I just kept seeing, like, mums and little babies or, like, kids and on the train. And I just kept staring at them. And I was like, that'll be me. And then loads of, like, influencers and celebrities were announcing pregnancies. And I was just like, it felt like I couldn't escape it. The thing that finally snapped me out of it, after I had my little day in fairy dreamland, I the thing that snapped me out of it was to be honest it was mostly the guy because <laughs> I suddenly was like oh my god this isn't just about me like I cannot bring a child into this world and I'm not saying you can't I'm not saying other people can't I personally could not bring a child into this world knowing that me and the dad don't love each other that was the only thing I think stopping me really because I genuinely was this close to having the baby 
is actually not funny. Can you imagine me? Like, I'm actually such a mess. Like, my life would have been so fucking different if I did choose to have it. But I just was like, he doesn't love me. Like, he doesn't want this baby. He doesn't love me. And I'd be starting out as a single mum. Like, that would change my life. And it's different if you have the baby and then within a year you break up. Then I would have found solace knowing that, like, okay, this baby was born out of love at least. And, like, my mum and dad aren't together, but I knew... They really loved each other when we were born and I think that to me means a lot so I think I just couldn't do it and I didn't know if I like no one wants to be a single mom of course loads of people are happy and live amazing lives as single parents and circumstances you can't really like help it but no one wants to start out like that is what I'm trying to say so I just thought no 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 I can't fucking do this but it did scare me because I was like I knew if I would have been with someone else at the time who I really loved and we were like happy, no matter the circumstances, I would have had that baby. I know I would have because I, the amount of like magnetic pull I had to it was insane. So it's not as simple as just, oh, you get an abortion, everything's fine. Like I genuinely was like, it was, I, I was like in love, I was like in love with my child. I was like, I want, I want this baby. <laughs> and I never ever thought I would be one of those people. And I never understood when people said that, like the hormones, it's the hormones are in your body to help you. We're built to reproduce, we are. So if we didn't have that hormone that made us love our child, no one would ever have children. Why would we? Because the rational brain would just go, nah, CBA. So it's literally biology, babes, okay? And I just, that's what fucking scared me and i think it's made me so careful now because i know if i ever am with someone again and i love them if we get pregnant i know i'm having that child like i just know it i know i can't go through this ever again like i actually i cannot have an abortion again because it was too hard both emotionally and both physically and also the guy was just out partying all the time and i was like watching his stories like damn like i'm here at home with this fucking problem and ordeal I have to go through and you're just out partying with your friends like nothing like it doesn't fall on the guy at all like none of it none of it it made me so angry like it made my blood boil because if you're not together and they're not emotionally supporting you like genuinely they're just living their life and you're like left with the ish you're just left with all the turmoil okay so that so that was me finding out and all the emotional shit that went with it next part is me actually going through with the abortion and I will say don't listen to this or don't carry on watching this if you don't like, you know, gross stuff, gory stuff. I, I'm not going to be ultra graphic, but it, it, it naturally is going to have to be. And I really don't want to scare anyone because, I mean, if you're watching this and you're about to have it, I don't, I don't want to freak you out because it is really scary. I was so scared. I don't think I've ever been that scared to do anything in my life, if I'm honest. But I am a bit of a pussy. Like, I've got a low pain threshold and... Yeah, basically don't watch this if you don't want to be freaked out, okay? But if you do want to hear what how what happens and how it goes down, because a little part of me wishes someone would have told me how bad it would be because the people that spoke to me about it, I don't know if they were just saving my feelings and trying to make it seem better than it was or if it actually wasn't that bad for them. But I was not prepared. Like, when I tell you I was not fucking prepared for how bad it was. Like, guys... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it was the worst pain. Like, that, I think that is the, wor is the worst thing I've ever gone through in that sense. Like, I would happily dislocate my knee again and again and again, and I, 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 but I'm not doing abortion. Like, I, there's no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it ever again. So how it works is you either go to like an abortion clinic, a doctor, whatever. In the UK, they've passed a new law that you don't actually have to go in face to face. So. I just like emailed them, called them, they made an appointment with me, they called me, and because I don't have any existing health conditions, they were pretty much like, yeah, you're good to go, like I didn't have to have a scan, nothing, like it was actually crazy how easy it was, and I'm blessed at NHS, I am so grateful for that. They're really good on the phone, like she was really sweet, and they look out for things if you're being abused, or if you were, if you were assaulted or anything, and they ask you, is it just you making this decision? They wanna know your, like they wanna know why as well. And obviously I just said, I'm not with the dad. Like, <laughs> let's be for fucking real love. Um, she she did tell me it was gonna be bad. Like she did tell me, and, I, and she was the actual first person that did tell me how bad it was gonna be. So you actually had two pills. The first one 
you do like i'm trying to remember so don't take this as scientific doctor advice by the way because i might be saying it wrong it happened a while ago so i can't really remember uh, but you get all the info and there's so much information online of what you're meant to do you get two pills one you take and you don't really feel anything i didn't that one you have to be very sure um if you want to do the abortion because that one will like essentially terminate the pregnancy and if you don't go ahead and do the other ones you will like i just i'm sorry i find this really hard to talk about um but it's important if you, if you don't do that one you will go on to still be pregnant but the baby won't be alive which is awful so you if you do the first one you have to do the second one so then you wait like i think it's like a day 24 hours or 48 hours something like that you gotta wait second one now that one is a motherfucker like that is that one's a scary one, okay? That is the process that is painful. Um, so you get like these four pills and you either have to have them in your mouth and like you keep them in your cheeks so they like dissolve or you have to put them up your vagina. I know, I know, it's horrible. <laughs> um, I personally did it like orally and I did it in the morning and you're meant to be with someone, okay? Because you know, it's a dangerous process, like you could you lose a lot of blood, like you could have health complications, so you're meant to be with another adult over 18, so the boy was really sweet and he did say he would be with me and he was like, my ex went for it before, like you're gonna be fine, like she said it was just like a bad period and loads of people said that to me, okay? Loads of people said it's just gonna be like a bad period, but like I don't mean to brag, but I don't get bad periods, I get like a little bit of cramps, I get more mood swings than like physical things. So do you know what, for someone who gets really bad cramps, it probably does feel like a bad period, but for me, I ain't ever felt shit like that before. Fucking hell. So I decided to go home. So I'm with my mum. And obviously my mum is gonna look after me, but it's traumatic for both of us, traumatic for her too. She was scared, like watching her little baby go through this. So I'm sat there with it in my mouth and it says, it takes, you take it and you leave it in your mouth for half an hour and then you swallow it. And then when you take them, you'll feel the effects within four hours. And if you don't, you have to call like 111. I'm sat there and it's like 10 a.m. and I'm just like watching Netflix, whatever. And I'm like thinking I'm gonna have a great day. Not a great day, but I'm gonna have quite a chill day. I've, I've got my hot water bottle. I've got stuff ready. Like I'm comfy. Like I was like, I can do this. You know, I've, I've got to fucking do this. I didn't take any pain medication. They give you like codeine, I think. Didn't take any paracetamol, didn't take any codeine. And when I tell you, the half an hour wasn't even up. My belly starts hurting, man. It's like rumbling, like really hurting. and, I, and I was like, surely fucking not. Like, surely it's not hurting already. And I kept saying, oh, and I was like moving around a lot. I was like, mum, it's really hurting. Like, can you make me a hot water bottle? And she was like, already? Because we thought we were going to have to wait four hours. Fuck me. It went from like zero to a hundred in five minutes. From like no pain to like excruciating in five minutes. Like, I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk. I, I, I couldn't even, like, nothing. Like, I can't explain it. It's like you can't do anything, but I couldn't just lie there either. So I was like wriggling because it's just like, but it just hurts so much. It's like, again, I don't want to scare you because I spoke to other women who did it and they said theirs was easy. Like they said they literally just had bad period pains and just kept going to the toilet a lot and that's it. So maybe I just had a bad reaction or I'm an unlucky one. I don't know, I don't want you to watch this and take this experience as normal, but I do want you to be prepared that it does hurt, okay? It fucking kills. So I'm like wriggling around, I'm like, mum, get out, no one talk to me. I'm just like in excruciating pain. I don't know what contractions feel like, but I imagine that's how they feel like. And that's that's that freaks me out about when I do have a baby. It's like stabbing, it's like knives, it's, it's like, knives stop knives stop knives and then sorry to be gross but i was on the toilet a lot a lot of uh diarrhea and then i started throwing up as well so and then i was getting worried because i was like have i thrown up the pill but apparently it's normal it says it on the little booklet that we got so i was like okay my mom was like it's normal it's normal so i'm like throwing up loads and it just it just was i don't want to keep going on but it it was probably, yeah, the most painful experience I've had in my life and the most unpleasant thing I've ever had to deal with in my life. It just feels like nothing will relieve it. And I didn't know what to do. This has been going on for four hours now, four hours. And you do keep going to the toilet and there is a lot of blood, a lot. Like you have to keep changing your pads. I would recommend getting um, literally like, not nappies, but like um, incontinence pads. They're like really, really thick. You will need them. And it does say on the pamphlet to get them. So you're going through that. 
and then I was like I don't I didn't know what to do and I was like I just want to be like in a bath like this all I could think was like I want to be in water like makes me feel good it's gonna feel better and you know what that was the only thing that helped me so maybe if you need advice run a hot bath and I just lied in there for so long and it really did soothe me and to be honest after I had the bath I felt a lot better and then you kind of have like a lot of st <laughs> I hate why am I even doing this video and then you have a lot of stuff like drop out like which I assume is like the baby <laughs> I don't know it's really it's really traumatic and horrible and it's just awful it's actually just it's horrific it's basically horrific okay um but after that after that four hours and that happening I felt fine like I had a little bit of pain but I felt okay I could take paracetamol I had a hot water bottle I had like a roast dinner I was watching films and I was all right okay so there is a light at the end of the tunnel if I can do it this little pussy who is scared of everything and every pain you could do it trust me and I think we're a lot more durable than we think that's what I realized I've lived to tell the tale you will too so I know it's scary but you will get through it you, I've done it one in three women in the UK have done it okay or are gonna do it so we've got this you will be okay I just needed to tell my story everyone calm down and then yeah you do bleed for a long time after like which is obviously a pain I'd recommend try and take off like as much work as you can or at least like two to three days and you just feel a bit down a bit exhausted a bit like drained and yeah it's just it's not nice it's like it's not ever good it was never gonna be a fun experience i i just like i said i didn't realize how awful it would be um and then it takes apparently like seven weeks for the pregnancy hormones to leave your body so you do just have these like crazy mood swings all the time and you just i felt weird after like i did feel different after like it was gone like i knew it was gone it was really weird you have to do a pregnancy test I think a month after I did the test of course but I knew like it, it's you know instantly it's I can't ex I can't explain the feeling but you know you know your own body so you know but I think like the support from my mom and my friends like it really got me through like they sent me cakes and flowers and just made me feel really loved and cared for and 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 the more people I speak to it's weird I'm I'm, a, I'm quite open about it like with people I feel safe with I mean I'm fucking telling the internet now but I have been open about it and I was shocked every time I've been open about it mostly someone will tell me their experience and they've gone through it too and I'm like wow if we all just became okay with talking about this stuff we maybe would realize more people have gone through it than we think and we wouldn't feel as alone and like have all those shameful guilty disgusting feelings that you do when you're going through something like that if anything good has come of it i do think it's made me realize i do want to have kids now like that feeling i had i'm like no no no. i definitely know that i want to have kids in my lifetime and i hope that i can it's made me more maternal person in that way and it's made me more careful person and it's made me stronger it's made me realize i can go through something really hard and get through it and i have so yeah if you are going through this or have gone through this i just want you to know you're not alone i'm sending you so much fucking love and all i can say is you're gonna be okay and like and whatever reason you're choosing to do this it's the right reason and you should be proud of yourself okay it's nothing to feel ashamed about it's human nature it's human life like if we're gonna have sex like we should be allowed to have sex because it's fun and free love whatever these things can happen okay so i am the cautionary tale and if you haven't gone through this and you've still chosen to watch this thank you um i hope it's shed some light on the experience and made you be a little bit more careful and also give love to anyone you know going through it or when someone tells you you can understand the depth of the situation and maybe know a better way to support them but Thank you so, so much for watching and holding and letting me have this safe space to talk about this. I feel like it's been very healing to discuss it actually because it, it just, I don't think it needs to be taboo, not in today's modern age. And if you are struggling with the decision of having an abortion or because you've had one, I will leave loads of links to like support groups or any like counseling or live chats that you can go to to get support. And I hope you have the best week. 
hopefully next video won't be as serious as this one but thank you babes 